After years working overseas, artist Megan Walsh has decided to put down some roots, returning home to Tasmania. Her adventures began as an 18-year-old when she won a prestigious scholarship in the United States. From there, she worked in studios across America, Asia and back in Australia. Fiona Breen caught up with the artist in her studio. <music> There's a, a moving, almost uh, like a whirlpool in the in the bottom layer. So um, that, that's quite a shifting uh, sense of upheaval um, on the first layer, and then the second layer is uh, a still, very still, and a collective motif on the top. It's the story of Megan Walsh's life over the past few years. From the hectic lifestyle of big cities, New York and San Francisco, to Tasmania. The change reflects in her latest work, an entry in this year's Hobart Art Prize. It started to become more figurative um, and it, the movement in the work started to slow down because I always had a lot of movement in, in the imagery, sort of a kinetic, f sort of fluid effect. And I think it's becoming stiller as my movement has slowed down and I'm putting down roots. It's the first big piece she's worked on in her Hobart studio. It's a treasured space at the back of the family home and a long way from the succession of studios Megan Walsh has worked in over the years. For 10 years, and this happens very rapidly in the United States, you know, artists set up a space, they gentrify it, the landlord raises the rent, you move on, you're kicked out and that that process happens so on fast forward compared to here. And I just, after 10 years of that, you, that was my, my priority was to have my own workspace. After more than 20 years away, Megan Walsh felt the pull of her home state. What brought you back here? Uh, family and the desire to settle and be able to have a property and really a studio that I, w I would be my own. There's always a conflict she's learnt to appreciate. What I love about Tasmania, I also hate about it and what I hate, I love. So uh, that, um, that little bit of disconnect and, and culturally that we're a, a little bit quaint or a little bit um, old fashioned, I think that's actually really delightful. Um, and, you know, people are friendlier and happier. And, um, but there is just also the, the very negative uh, side of our culture as well, where people lack confidence. For the artist, it was love at first sight when she spotted the former boat shed and future studio in the heart of suburban Newtown. My family being involved with boat building and the, the gentleman who built the place being a boat builder um, and I have a, a real connection to the fact that he was quite an inventive, creative man in the middle of the Depression. That resonates with the time that we're going through at the moment. Any worries about professional isolation have gone. The family's arrival coincided with a changing art scene. I think Tasmania is coming of age and I, I think, um, you know, I wouldn't be the only person that would say that, but uh, now physical proximity, it was everything. And even in the last few years, that's changing. So I'm more in contact with people in New York and America now than I ever was uh, because Tasmania has become interesting. And David Walsh has put it on the international map. She's had exhibitions in America and Australia, and more recently at the Art Gallery of New South Wales, where her 10 metre by three and a half metre piece was painted directly on the wall in the gallery's foyer. That was from a manipulated photograph of our walk to Frenchman's Cap to commemorate my great-grandfather uh, cutting the track a hundred years ago. 
It stayed on the wall for three months. Such a, an iconic foyer space <laughs> to do, so it was very important. Um, and very, very important that it was ephemeral. It was there for three months and then painted over. So that was an, a nice part of the, of the job, that it wasn't going to be a permanent painting. Moving back to Australia and specifically Tasmania is a sea change that appears to be working well. Without doubt it would enable me to be more prolific and, and live a life where I'm expanding in 360 degree direction rather than this uh, imbalanced work, work, work development which was my uh, trajectory for that decade so I can have a larger life here, uh, a family. And that's the program for this week. Good night.